Yeah, we're gonna go live here, live here on train. Got the knife round. But yeah, that, that point about uh, being uh, able to take maps off of any of the top eight, but not necessarily favored, not not with enough experience or uh, or you know, yeah, just experience to like take the win against against these more experienced teams that are a little bit better than you. But maybe you know, maybe that'll change in the future. I have personal experience there because that's the kind of player I was in Quake. Hey, you know, I could beat anyone basically, or I could take maps off anybody. Um, but when it came to the tournament matches, it was much, much harder for me back then when I was really young. So, Cloud9 starting a CT. Definitely. We'll have to see what they can do with this because that would be the, that's what they want. This is the perfect kind of place they should be in. However, we, s we kind of felt that way on Overpass when they started off on CT against uh, Affinity. So, I mean, again, CLG, what we tend to see on this map is. It's about having the A execute as a C as the T's, having the wall of smokes outside, getting yourself free map control into an A bomb A bomb site, or if you're on the B site, being able to get the fast pick into a fast push to connect there. That, those are like the two big dynamics here. Yeah, and it looks like CLG is just going for the straight A uh, B YOLO tactic. This is like the train play of old. This is like the super classic train play. Uh, rush in it. Yeah, Let's exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got pistols, guys. Uh, rush B. It makes sense because you've got closer ranges, you can get onto the site real quick. You don't have to try to like challenge USPs or, or you know, in buy rounds, big, you know, sniper rifles and you know, general rifles in, in long ranges. So that makes a lot of sense. And now Cloud9 after a, a a play towards A, they're actually all rotated to B in time. In time as well. But Tarek says no to Sean Gares. He's gonna pick him up with that Glock. And it's gonna be Cloud9 making their way back in. And the bomb is not even being planted. This usually would would be a very bad situation for the T's. CT's all over the place right now, coming up on the side from every single side, but block shots raining in from CLG to try to take these kills. And they're actually finding some frags right now, but it's going to be Finesse, the leader of CLG. He was the last one left, but now he's no more. And Freak it will be didn't, yeah, Freakasaur didn't really realize there was no one left there looking for the last one. I love that when that happens. Yeah. It's like, okay, I, I got in it, guys. I'm watching in a. So, yeah, uh, and the best part, you, you should never tell down. him. Never tell him. <laughs> yeah. Just let him run, run around like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's great, uh, great for the morale. Just making <laughs> it full of your teammates. I can see why you're a caster now, Perrette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I've got the uh, save from CLG to get the bomb down. So we'll see AKs in the next round. And the nades. Maybe even actually just a couple AKs and three Tech Nines with all the smokes being afforded. That could be possible as well. Or we got Kalil's. But they're actually going to make it to a B-bomb site that's actually fairly clear. And this this is crazy. You would expect them to go B on a round like this. And they're going to get a kill and a free bomb plant. And they're going to get positioning outside connector. That's usually that's usually the checkmate against the CTs if you just keep them in a spot where they can never move out of connector. And they're actually saving. They think... They think... Uh, they forced. CMG. Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. That Cloud9 had, have no idea that they have Glocks and no armor. I am... I, um, I but why, why, why would the guy on inner, like, you can always go close to lo the low ramp in the yeah. beginning of the round. You, you don't even have to peek because you will hear them running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're okay, oh, they took secret fast or they didn't. Like, you, you just gain that information without any risk at all. Yeah. What's happening? What, what is this? This is crazy. I don't understand. That, that looks crazy to me. I mean, I don't, because, I don't know, it's, it's, we, talk, we talked about it on the pistol round. Even if it's going to be a force up, the B, the fast B plays are super common. They're very people love to do them when they're in an unfavorable spot because you get the fast bomb plant. That's kind of the reason to do it. You can get a fast bomb plant, and uh, if you get the fast kill using the numbers advantage. So crazy that we saw almost a, a lack of awareness there. And Sean Gares is going to be playing up into the stairs with his P90, and this would be pretty amazing if. Cloud9 actually win this round somehow. They're all over the shop with these rifles. We got uh, nothing pop flashing. That was a perfect pop flash down the ladder there. Well, actually, maybe didn't go too uh, down far enough, but nothing's not going to matter. He's going to take a frag, get significant damage onto Tarek, and it might just be Cloud9 winning this round. The bomb has not gone down just yet. Nothing in Freakazoi left alive. RK, Freakazoi is going to go down straight away, and nothing's going to try to save 1 HP. Um, damage was done, but I think CLG are laughing at this point. From that, that they, they would never have expected to win that round. They're playing for the bomb plant. And that's the thing with like newer maps like this. You can see these, these kind of mistakes 
you wouldn't see that kind of mistake on Dust2. Like, oh, they could be running over here, apparently. Like, it doesn't happen on a map like that. Yeah, of course. Everyone has so much experience. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it was obvious that the Cloud9 player didn't really have the timings down. Even with the, the as you said, like, the meta developing, so more teams are, or teams are more likely to go forcing it up after the bomb plant instead of waiting in rounds for the AKs because the tech line is so good and uh, and so on, and just for the surprise factor. And the ability to drop an AK maybe if someone gets some kills and so on in the first round. It's it's still one of those spots where you just got to wonder what was going on. Just, I don't know. Either way, it seemed like they were expecting an A play, um, potentially with Nace if they ex expected the force. But we're going to see CLG with two rounds already on the T side with economic control against the CTs who won the pistol. And that is a situation that can kill you on train. Um, especially especially uh, if uh, we don't see any good, super good executes in, in the Cloud9 later on their two side. But we'll have to wait and see how their two side looks. CLG, I mean, their reputation, they don't necessarily have a reputation on train. So it could be that their, uh, their CT holds are not perfect against against the, the normal box standard executes. And that could be how Cloud9 get back into the game later if they do have not have the best CT side. Yeah, th this version of the train is the least CT sided of all of them, even though it's really CT sided, mm. of course. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like CLG has done their homework. We saw on the pistol round they had a set smoke for inner. So. I don't know, it looks like they know what they're doing on this map. Yeah, so far, so good for CLG. Now, Cloud9 will be able to potentially hang on to this. AK on Skadoodle, which is always nice. Ooh, that flick. Almost finding Sean Gares as he just runs along the upper area. And uh, he will go down in the end. Skadoodle will stay alive. So Cloud9 going to be on the bite. And they need to really reel it in now. They can't let CLG win this and then force out an eco and then get to five and then they get one chance again. That, that cannot happen. For Cloud, if for Cloud9's perspective, that cannot happen. They're gonna have an AWP on Skadoodle, so... Oh, glass cannon off without Kevlar. Alright. Now, what will we see from CLG? So far, it's just a uh, movement towards the upper area. They're taking secrets fast again, and once again, the inner player playing very passively, so... If he would have just, like, stood close to low ramp, he, could, he would have known that they have, t have taken secrets. What do you call this? Do you call it secret in CSGO as well? Because we call it that in 1.6. <laughs> I actually don't know what like standard name on train. I don't know what the what, what the consensus is actually at the moment. Yeah, it, that, it's that particular corridor has like a lot of different. You can call it that particular corridor if you want. Yeah, that particular corridor. It's r like really easy to say <laughs> in mid round. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. They actually have some set nades and just a fake as well. Look at the rotation from Cloud9. Yeah, that fast uh, play into Pop Dog. This is this is the, the the scary part. And they're all out of position. Cloud9 all out of position because they were kind of sold on this uh, B play. But they have to move in back into position, get the frags as they go, and that's what they're doing. Skadoodle. Oh, what a shot there onto Tarek, and they will slowly eliminate these T players. You couldn't really find the frags. So Hayes has managed to work his way in through B, and this is actually now. If you would imagine a situation where CLG pick up even a, a kill or two, they're in one. Let's say one player's alive, and it's like a two on four, or well, a two on three or something. Hayes is coming in from the back. They, they, that might be the the round winning play. So like that's actually quite cool that the way that Hayes found his way into that timing, because Carlin shut down CLG very quickly there, and we did see a uh, a lack of smokes. I think outside they were looking for the jewels with the AKs. This time it was Skadoodle who got some really sick shots, to be honest. He yeah. only got two chances at shooting and he hit and he kills, killed the uh, players both times. Yeah, exactly. CLG had great decision making that round. It was just like the advantage you get a CT and Skadoodle hitting his shot. So we'll get some entries coming in here. Hazed and Tarek picking up frags. And it was a double up setup from Cloud9. And it's not paid off so far as they are down two players against the four, remain four remaining players of CLG, and that's the finish. And i got to say, um, what do you think of double orbs on the CT side? Because we saw them picking it up like they wanted, like, okay, this is, our, this is our final form. This is, you know, what we want to play with. But from all the smoke 
wall of smokes that I've been seeing on a a recently. It feels like that completely destroys the ability to play warps. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, you see Virtus Pro, which is one of the best teams on this map now. They don't even use yeah, single, don't single use, warp. Yeah. They don't even put anyone on CT Sky ever. Either. No, no, because it's like as, as you say, the terrorists use the smokes. And sure, when the smoke disappears, the op is good. But the round is decided during the time the smoke is up. Mm. So like. It makes no sense of having an ult because you need to win the face when the smokes is up. The thing is though, if COG are not going to have smoke execute, it actually makes a stronger round for Cloud9. So that's actually the awesome thing for them if, if they don't see those smokes. The problem is though, we, we do have COG back into this and we're going to get a frag or two coming in on this round from uh, Cloud9. But they are losing their, their CT side right now, quite heavily so. and. The fact that COG are actually most, I think we have not seen smokes in yard just yet from them. So maybe this was a response by Cloud9 saying, hey, normally we, maybe we wouldn't purchase this, the, uh, the orbs, but you guys aren't smoking outside, so we can just get easy kills. But, th but it, it, for some reason, did not work out. Very fast entries on the outside in that particular round. And mm -hmm. COG will pick up another one, 5-2 to two now in favor of COG on their T side. And I did not expect this, especially after the CT pistol win. No, not at all. Um, I wonder if Cloud9 just got a bit upset after that really awkward inner eco. Yeah, it's, it's always possible. It's always possible. And the money for the CLG is very, very good here. And uh, we're seeing that Cloud9 are going to squeeze out the buy. Going to be able to buy all the goodies. And an AWP. And it, uh, like one AWP is always going to be fine. And if, especially if it's on Skadoodle. He is pretty good. He's pretty good at this game. Arguably the best uh, AWP -er in in North America. The guy is pretty damn talented. Now CLG once again they're just trying to move into yard with some picks, a pick based play. Not many grenades to help support them. There is a smoke to block the angle, but Sean Gares he is going to be ahead of that play. He's going to get the kill. So some preemptive frags here towards the closer uh, closer engagements towards the choke points has put Cloud9 in a good position. Color's going to flash in though. Oh wow, he finds a kill on nothing there. Through the smoke. I feel like I'm going to be saying through the smoke a lot in this match. And we're going to have another kill from Sean Gares. He has been doing a great job. There's a second one for him. Yeah, there is still a chance that Cloud9 can make the lockdown and get up to the double digits. It's not impossible. I mean, it's just so hard. Like, if the terrorists go in with the mindset just going for like the YOLO type of play out on the yard, it's really hard to stop. SET every single time. Yeah. It's hard to do it like. By the way, you can see Cutler yeah. just ignoring Sean Gares. He's just going up and down on the ladder because the hitboxes are such. If you jump onto the ladder, I think. Yeah. You, you can't even really kill that guy because the, the hitboxes are kind of messed up. So you can get free information. So you can see Cutler just not even paying attention to him. You don't actually even have to go up and down. You can just stand still because. As you say, if you jump up on the ladder, the hitbox is lower than the actual model. So if mm. you could go uh, all, like up the ladder, let's say on the inner bomb site, you can actually spot both low ramp and high ramp without being able to be killed. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And I'm quite happy that maybe they know it and they just yeah, don't use yeah, it because yeah. it's just so stupid. No, I, no I've, seen, I've seen this at the moment. Like Everyone is just, just mutually, mutually decided without saying anything that we're not going to use this horribly yeah. broken bug in the game right now. Which I think is actually very m mature, to be honest. Um, nice kill there by JDN64. Skadoodle with the challenge on the AWP. That's the first time he's tried to do that as well, which really sucks uh, for Skadoodle and for Cloud9 as well, as uh, they look to posture into the inner take. Nate's going in, and Sean Gares wants to get right in front of the smoke, which is a good play. But now CLG going to wait, which is quite cool considering they got the opening pick as well. It's early into the round. Again, yeah. Cloud9 forced to be completely out of position on eight. Yeah, and this is not a position you want to be in I think on this map. Like, how do you position yourself? You can't hold all three uh, spots on yard with only... Yeah. Because then, then you only leave one guy on inner. This is so smart from CLG, they're going back. And Cloud9 is so afraid of B at the same time, it's just like the perfect spot that CLG are making yeah. like what seems to be the perfect play here. Although they're not moving in just yet, and nothing does have an AWP on, on the pop dog angle. 
Ooh, they are trying to sell it here. They're really trying to sell the fake into this B area. Tarek gets the kill onto Sean Gares, the trade. Shroud gets another one. He's looking for the next player. Where is the bomb? Where is the bomb? That's the question for Cloud9, but it's on A. That fake was completely sold by COG. What a play from them. And now the retake has to come in from Cloud9 as they look to get through these choke points. It's going to be Freakazoid completely destroyed by Haze. How on earth do you get through these choke points? Nothing scanning with the AWP long range by Ali, but... It's going to be tough for him to get any kills if uh, TLG play the angles correctly. I th think they will spot him and he's going to turn tail and run. Keep the AWP alive if he can. Great flick there by nothing, but it's small consolation in the face of losing yet another round on the CT side of Train. And I must say, I'm really impressed by the decision making by CLG. Some people might think, oh, it, why should you fake when you're in a 5v4? Like, you get the end frag on the inner bomb site. Uh, then you can just play the numbers and just push five people on the same place. But uh, they understand, like, okay, Club9 have the mindset that they're in, in a disadvantageous position. They're probably going to over-rotate when we, f uh, like, throw nades at a spot. And so we should just fake, and it just worked. Perfectly. Just yeah. great play from CLG. Yeah, uh, FNS, well, FNS is the leader of CLG as well, so um, definitely got to throw a lot of credit his way as well, making the calls. And we're going to have all the D coming out from Sean Gares. Not going to connect with the Cobalt disruption just yet, as the uh, CLG lineup slow things now. They're trying to bait out some, some plays here from Cloud9. And Cloud9 not really biting, but they have such a disadvantage. Only Skadoodle and the AWP. Uh, really, it's going to take a pretty impressive performance from their star opera for them to win this round. There it is. Skadoodle picks up the first kill. Hayes goes down, but once again, they posture into B and then throw them for a loop with the play onto A. The CLG seems to be outplaying Cloud9 straight up at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. It's just great decision making by them. And they play it the way you usually play the old, old train as T. You just want to toy the seat is back and forth and just go for that straight either A or B through the pop ladder because you can rotate so fast through Pop Dog both sides. Yeah, we're going to have uh, another round one by CLG. 7 2 3. And the interesting thing is that um, we still haven't seen a single smoke. That's what blows my mind, actually, because the funny thing is that CLG, even if it's strong, they don't need to do it yet. Like, they, they haven't won every aim duel battle when they've been buying against fire. When they move into yard, it's become more favorable for them not to use smokes. Yeah, they just keep taking secrets, like inner, forcing Cloud9 to play two guys in inner as well. And just look at this, now they're just mixing things up. Bomb co going towards alley. Looks like a fast uh, alley push. And we've got Freak so close to the top ladder. He's going to get annihilated by FNS. FNS rather. And that's again another early advantage found by CLG. And so they look to go in now. Free rally in. They might try to actually get the play, try to get the alley, the B splits. Now you never ever see this, at least in Europe, because it's so hard to get through alley and into CT spawn and then into B. But I guess we won't see it because the bomber's actually on alley, so it wouldn't make sense to, to go with the bomber here. Um, so I guess we won't see that, but they'll try to wrap into A. So the angle gets the shot onto Cutler. And once again, we get an even situation. Time is starting to run out in the round. We've got 50 seconds left remaining. They're trying to go in there. There's the trade. Tarek is found by nothing. Oh, just missing the incendiary a little bit there, but that's actually going to help him out. Going to take down Haste as well. Nothing. Oh, oh just turned away the wrong timing. Oh, I think the presence of, of Vanessa was announced, however, with the AK just uh, rattling off a single bullet, and that's going to leave JD and 64 alone. And uh, the slow play has not been working here for CLG in this round. Cloud9 have systematically taken jewel by jewel and won, or well, seemingly have won the round here. Not enough time here, I think, for JD and 64. Look at the frag, though. Going to try to make a go of it. And Cloud9 should be, uh, should be uh, not winnable for JDM considering the time, and indeed, he will go down. So, no, a round for Cloud9. And CLG is probably just going to go back to the thing that worked for them, which was taking secret early in the round, pressuring the inner bomb site, and just falling back to A. Their money, though, is... Oh, they're actually broke. Why is their yeah, money right. so low? Yeah, this is actually really... I was just looking at their money, I'm like, what? Three players, 2k and less? That's actually kind of nuts. They just... Because how they strung so many rounds together. But double up again from Cloud9. And 
in theory, if the if CLG are just not going to commit to any A smoke plays, the double orbs actually makes a lot of sense. And, uh, the, you know, they should be forcing those A smoke plays from Cloud9. But we will have uh, the push spotted with a more forward position onto the inner spot this time from Cloud9 as well. So they got the information. They would have had the steps early into the round. And now we've got, after the early timing, Shroud falling back, which is kind of what you're talking about. Just waiting for some action. And there's a nade. And uh, Shroud goes over the top by the ladder. Now there's the spray down and keeping himself uh, safe there. Very nice positioning, actually, from Shroud in this. Um, JDM64 going to try to get some extra damage done. Ooh, might catch Shroud. He's just chilling on the ladder. And uh, indeed, he will get the kill onto Finesse. You picked up a double there somehow. And we've got Finesse just like a sprinting through connector, finding himself by the bomb train on the other side. And it's going to be the frag for Cloud Nine's nothing. So another round by Cloud Nine, but this time. It was against an eco. They took a lot of damage, though. Yeah, two people also. Great play there from FNS, and uh, let's see what they try to do now. They have only went for a fast yard push like once. Maybe they will try to do that again. Bomb going towards Ali again, so they want to try that Ali push again once more. And they actually seem to have set rounds because they did the exact same pattern last time they did this. Two people going. Uh, like up towards the shower area. And Cutler makes the pick onto nothing there. Did we just see the kind of like 1.6 star jump from nothing where you try to like cut your trajectory in half by pressing this direction? Looks like that was what happened there, but we're gonna get the push coming through Ali. Cloud9 are deflecting it quite effectively, and this this round has not worked yet here. Not even close, for actually, for a CLG. Second time they've run it, and Time it's failed, it was seen, but Hayes is gonna make it a painful failure. But uh, nonetheless, Cloud9 pick up another round. I feel G's economy is probably quite poor, yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, they had so much success going for the, the inner plays and using, like, basically reading it, the situation based on what they thought the Cloud9 were forced to react by and then trying to exploit it. They actually did that, like you said before, decision making there was like super good. And they were just outplaying them on decision making, uh, outplaying Cloud9 on decision making. And then they also, when they were going yard with no nades, no smokes, they were winning all the angels every time. And now they're kind of not doing what was working for them in the past, which is an interesting choice. Sometimes you want to predict when the siege is gonna like anti strat you, mm. and you want to be one step ahead of them, but when that fails, you usually just want to go back what worked. Okay, and we just, okay, we just saw, I think, uh, haste with the bomb running to the pit long range picks instead of just dropping into the plant there. So a lot of damage again sustained by Cloud9 going into the last round, but I gotta wonder Is it the last round? I, oh okay, yeah, yeah. They had enough money, so they didn't need need the bomb plant, so yeah. that's fine. Okay, so full buy for both sides. Who's gonna win this round for it? I think Cloud9, because they're starting to build some kind of momentum now and they're siege on train, so Based on that, they have, would have a high percentage. I think if COG go, go yard, they're going to win the rounds. That's my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> if they go yard for a yard push. It's just been successful for them so many times. But have a, they're moving into an earth. This can just be like a kind of a map control play, just to announce presence. The, I remember against Versus Pro, Na'Vi had to always do this because Taz wanted, Taz was playing B for, on the CTD. Yeah, just trying to push behind them. Always, yeah, yeah, he was always trying to push behind them. And if he caught them, with the smokes out, or if they went back to just smoke, execute into A, he would catch them, and uh, the flank would be just destroy the play for, for Na'Vi in those, in those rounds. But JDM64 is going to be the one that gets the pick here. They were slowly creeping down into the inner site, into the B-bomb side, and we've got a really fast push here all the way down, but the CTs are spread out now. We can see the, the trio that's left, Skadoodle, nothing, and Freakasoid, well, nothing's going to get taken down by JDM64 for his second kill. Tarek's gonna find one in the smoke and CLG, they are gonna win their T side of train. This is an outcome I don't know that anyone necessarily expected, especially Cloud9, having picked this map, because again, the CT side, that's where you, you'll find your success. You win the knife round, you're like, oh, thank God. You win the pistol, you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, wait, what? We just lost the, the, uh, the second round. What's, and it was happening? almost a full Glock eco as well. That's the craziest yeah, there was thing. Yeah, there was AP250 or something. Yeah. Like AP250. I think that's one of those rounds that just should never, ever happen. I think... Like, I, I think the guy standing behind the, the three train, I don't know what you call it, but the th we call it the three train, and the, 
what bumps, like, what bumps like? On, on B. On B, yeah, okay. yeah so exactly. The, tra- the yeah, train yeah, yeah. The, the guy, right the the guy the holds ramp. the gear, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, the train right next to the ramp. Yeah, between those trains he was standing. Okay, yeah. And he probably thought he would hear them if they were running out high. And that's just like showing that you don't. he doesn't have like proper experience with the map, mm. which which is like uh, understandable, seeing it's so new. But they did pick the map. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's like you don't know any, uh, everything. You saw the last round as well. He was standing behind that like a tree thing, mm. w- which they added, and uh, the guy jumps down low ramp with an op, and he like turns around, picking high ramp. Sean Garris run out connector, just immediately dying. So for him, that step probably sounded like it came from high ramp. Right. And one thing that I've noticed as well is that uh, players, you kind of want you want your your players, um, your player, sorry, that's uh, on the inner, on the inner defense, to be one of your best fraggers usually, because usually that position comes down to a lot of solo play, because you don't always want to have two guys committed to B, so you want tr- you want to try to get away with that in a lot of rounds, because you're so afraid of A, and uh, the guy that would normally play the the upper area, he can't necessarily defend against the inner push super well, because if they just go straight down the ramp, they'll get the plant, and he'll get locked out of the bomb site, and that guy who plays the upper area. Um, who can you know, peek into the long corridor of secret. Um, that guy, if it, they do go into it, he's so far away on the rotate that, it, that, that often I see a lot of teams, they just don't, they, they and will only really put a, a guy there every so often. And like we saw Skadoodle actually peek it. That was so unlucky. That was so unlucky. Skadoodle peeked it once with the orb. And then, and then he just got yard. killed. Yeah. No, no, no. no. He, just, he just got instantly killed. Oh, yeah. yeah Genius yeah. was just looking there waiting for him and he just got killed. And that's like really unlucky because that's one of those spots where. You d- again, you don't just you don't do it all the time, and just the one time that he did do it, yeah. he just got annihilated. So, I mean, I feel like that's going to happen less of the time than when he got when Skidoo peaked on Inferno on Balcony uh, to second mid, where they were just waiting for him, because yeah. that's something that teams just generally look for these days. Yeah, so. I, I agree with you. This comes back to what we talked about basics. Basics on CT train is that you don't want to take secret at CT. You want to just like have one guy going aggressive low ramp, just trying to get some information, just falling back, mm. then having a defensive op peaking high and like then you can push secret like an answer to what uh, CLG did there like okay they're taking secret every round let's just play two CTs aggressive there in the beginning and just trying to stop their like standard setup but so yeah like you should never peak like schedule did yeah. alone because it, like it makes no sense yeah yeah because you don't even have to necessarily do that you don't yeah. even need, you need, like you can let them kind yeah of take exactly it cause exactly because this is like one of the things as well that you always see if you watch like a lot of training matches it's always this dynamic where if the T's get the bomb down, which they can do very quickly, it's, it's, that's, not, that's, that's great for them, their economy and stuff, but they still have to actually take the majority of the entire like, train yard in that, that bomb site. Because if they can make it to connector and stop the CTs from coming out and get positions like below the trains, below the ramp, all over the place, you just don't know where they are as a CT, then the CTs, like, their retake is so hard. But if they're stuck on the bomb train and in inner, then the CTs have a really favorable retake. So you can let them, you can play the retake all the time. So. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. We could actually talk more about it, this kind of stuff, but we're going to have the pistol in the second half here. Something that Cloud9 desperately needs to take, and looks like a good situation here for Cloud9. Yeah, did CLG just hit his own team? I, I think, actually think did. so. Yeah. What's the matter though? Sean Guess is going to go down straight away. They're going to go for the play through alley, and so far it's actually going to allow them to get a, a frag or so. A couple of frags now as they make their way onto the bomb train, but it's even. Well, nice stink there from nothing. Because we're going to get the bomb planted on the A train. And uh, we'll get the retake attempt. Hayes going to go down. Freakazoid. Though we'll fill the Rath of Tarek. It goes in as well from the back of the A train. It's going to be nice angles found by Cloud9. And this is another reason, I think, why the the A site executes with the Wall of Smokes can be so good. Because once you get a couple of frags and you start to spread your T's around, the angles you have to cut to try to retake against as the CTs are so hard compared to B, where it's basically like you're looking in one direction, kind of. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. So as soon as the bomb gets planted on yard, you basically have to, like, ninja defuse the bomb in a smoke or something as CT. Ninja, you sweet. <laughs> you said ninja. God uh, damn! I'm gonna get you out of that habit. <laughs> you meet London now. I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, 3 a.m. here in. No yoke. No joke. No yoke. I'm gonna <laughs> talk like this now. Just to piss you off. Alright, we have the force up here from the CTs. <laughs> Cloudline did get that all important pistol. And we are gonna see whether or not they can actually hold on to this now. They've got the opening kill, they've got the bomb planted on B. And there is 
no entry here for CLG really. Collector's kind of open, but I think that is uh, by design here. I think CLG would uh, best try to save these, these some of these guns. They might as well at this point. Because also they don't, they don't give up money to the SMGs potentially. I see some teams actually try this now, like as, especially in, in a spot like um, where the CT money economy is, oh sorry, the CT economy is really important, where they'll just, they'll just, oh uh, sorry, uh, well the T economy is important, they just save, because if you're up against SMGs, why just run and die and give them yeah. money? When you, when you can survive at least around and still get money. So it's, it's one of those spots that I'm seeing more and more from teams saving on the, completely on these rounds. Especially if you play like a stack on one side, they go to the other side. Wow, just let them just save and let them try and kill us. Yeah, like maybe try to get for like go for one or two exits, but just take like super safe positions. You know, let's see what Cloud Nine does now. Bomb going towards Alley actually. When they know still these on on half eco. Interesting. All right, so gonna have to get these shots connected. Our Cloud9 on the entry into the A site. Now, Yard has been breached. They are making their way along the side of the trains where this guy used to be. And Hayes is gonna make it fast grab for the dig. But he comes in though. He still needs to go down. We've got a weak, a weak player here, Tarek. He's gonna be uh, with that 5-7. I'm not sure where Tarek is. Oh, we're gonna get the frag onto Freakazoid though. Two players down now for Cloud9 as the chaos resumes. Cutler making his way and gets a nice shot onto Sean Gez. He's going to back away. They're all actually, they all die in one shot from the scout. So good damage actually afforded by CLG with those pistols. But it will be the uh, full buy for them now. And Cloud9, they actually did lose a few players. So I think CLG will be actually happy with the damage that they inflicted. Yeah, absolutely. And if they win this... Economy for Cloud9 is going to be really, really poor. It could be like one of the reasons that Cloud9 could have chosen this map could have been actually because of the T side. They could just have some things that they think are already either really strong or really broken on the T side, um, a side that normally it's harder to get rounds on. So uh, they're just breaking all the glass there, which is uh, scary. <laughs> Going to allow you to, of course, you know, throw the nades through for the executes. Um, Looks like they're going to go for maybe they're going to fake in or. And just go for a down the pop ladder, but as nothing goes down there, I don't know really. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the NF place. Well, looks looking for picks all over the place at the moment, as uh, we can see. Three on three now, good trade coming in from Freakazoid onto Tarek. So there is a minute left on the clock. This is awesome when you're a T side. You've got a three on three, a minute left to play with. You can go anywhere. The world is your oyster. Although there are no oysters on trains. On trains, sorry. On train. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even. All right, we've got the entry coming in. The usual smoke off there for Connector. Vanesto coming in from the back. He's going to get Sean Gez. The bomb goes down. He's going to find Freakazoid. That silencer providing a key, key couple kills. And now Skidule is up against Finesse. 30 seconds to play with. Oh, the nade goes in. He's going to do a huge amount of damage there to Finesse. He knows he's there. Just going to pre fire it, but Finesse. He has the uh, easier engagement. He's going to pick up the kill, and that is the round for CLG. Cloud9. They have to. F yeah, they can't afford, but the, even if they couldn't afford, they would have to force by because Money. only one player survived from this CLG. They're, they're in a terrible position if they lose this round now. Yeah, it's going to be up on Skadil. And I, I really want to see um, all the executes from Cloud9, see what they've got in store, what, what drills they've been going with on train. So far, they've been playing a pick-based game. Um, something that actually was uh, CLG found success in. That CLG hit with that fast-paced pick-based game. Pick-based. That was a really weird first <laughs> sentence. <laughs> All right, we've got Cloud9 now going in for the inner play. No nades, actually. Just, just going for the raw push, running in. And actually, Sean Gaz getting the entry onto JDM64. That's a key frag shroud covering the flank. And we are, oh dear. Sean Gaz going to team kill nothing. Trades upon trades. And it is now a one on two shroud, last man standing. That bomb taking away. Now they don't know where he is. If he plays this smart, he can win this round. Oh, Hazed. I think he like popped up on a ladder there or something, but the spray did not do the job from shroud. And I and don't know how Sean Garris TK'd there, but yeah. it was pretty deciding in that round. Yeah. They had a 5v3 for a while, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did because they got the entry and then. The second kill followed after the, uh, the Shroud got on the flank, and then that yeah. was 5 on 3. 
So the three players coming in from Connector. Uh, Come on, has to have to buy. Come on, buy. You have to buy. Yes. Yeah, he did a lot of damage that round. Yeah. So they're gonna force it up. Threat is happy. <laughs> yeah, you, especially when you're T on train, you really need to like punish their economy. They, they have three smokes and a couple molotovs. They can absolutely go for an execute. Are we gonna get potentially a push here from CLG? Old boosting over the smoke. This is. Oh, did. Oh. oh. Gonna fall off the crate. Is they help? <laughs> help me. The reboost. One more time, please. One more time. Oh my god. The tension. It's palpable. Oh, he's gonna find the frags, Skadil. And Hayes gets a second one. Oh my god, they run into what was a perfect counterplay from CLG on Ali. And that that just happens. That's the variance in CSGO sometimes, but Freakazoid finds the spray down through the smoke. Yeah, the M64 getting a bit of a tag there through the train. And uh, now we have a situation where Cloud9 still can find advantages here despite nothing being fairly low. Just have to get the entry. The clean entry can mean everything here. Freakazoid going in. They don't have anyone immediately on Ali. All it takes is this, uh, you know, the wrong player to look the wrong way. Just one time for Cloud9 to take advantage, but JDM64 is not going to be looking anywhere but Freakazoid's head as he finds the kill, and we get a couple of trays coming in, but very favorable here for CLG. And they seem to have been, uh, they seem to be in a position of uh, absolute domination there towards the end of the round. Very well done by them. And once again, a threat. If we don't see a single wall of smokes execute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit sad. Yeah, and they're like, keep breaking the windows, so they're just like teasing us. Yeah, exactly, because that's the reason why you why you break the windows, so you can throw the nades through um, for the execute, but anyway. Um, they might actually full eco, and they can like build up their economy and they will do it next time. Good nades, oh my god, that was dis so destructive there. Nothing down to 22, so we do 11. That lack of armor really, really hurting against the HEs. And uh, we will have a pretty clean round here, it would seem, from CLG. They've just got a couple players left to finish off, and the frags will come easily enough. And, uh, CLG positioning themselves to to be in a, a really strong position, an unbreakable one, unless Cloud9 can switch something up here, because their pick-based game so far has not worked out. To be fair as well, um, their alley play, they got unlucky. They absolutely got unlucky. Um, CLG ran a play that they're not going to use maybe more than even once, yeah. and they ran into it that round. Yeah, um, let's see if they're going to go for the Wall of Smokes now. Five smokes. So... A few Molotovs as well. Come on, break the windows. Bomb is... yeah. yeah they made oh, three people pushing in there. And that's going to be an advantage for Cloud9. This is what we were talking about before. Taking those aggressive plays when you're straight, straight up standard stuff is actually working. And that's going to cost uh, CLG three players. They're in a two on four right now. And we'll have to have a quick check of their money and just just to evaluate their play. Yeah, they don't have a huge amount of money here. If, if Cloud9 starts to bring if Cloud9 starts to bring some uh, momentum into this, then CLG are going to need all this all these guns and, and uh, that they're saving here. Yeah, and I think the thought behind that was uh, Cloud9 just wanted to get the secret before they was going to go for the yard push because we saw the bomb was towards uh, A main. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Cloud9 tries to do the same strat again because CLG just went for a information play pushing three people in there. Cloud9 just killed them immediately. Yeah. So CLG has no clue what went on that round. So. Cloud9 yeah. probably going to do the same thing. It's, it's one of those spots where you kind of like overplay your hand a little bit. Again, we, again, we talked about this on in, on Inferno. Your, your basics are working. Absolutely. Cloud9 were trying to find a way to respond, but you're like showing them your cards here. It's like, here yeah. you go. This is my cards. This is what I'm going to do. And uh, so you now you have an advantage. You can, you can beat out my play as you know what's coming. And I mean, the two, the two kills there, is, I mean, they would have heard the running as well. They had a good positions for the trades. They didn't even get, didn't even get traded on. So, and yeah, they're doing the same thing now again. Okay, so yeah, it looks like the glass is being broken. It and after breaking the glass, they're just gonna make sure that nobody's going for the flank, providing some presence, shooting around a little bit, in and up. Yeah, and as you can see, this was their plan. Sean and uh, Shroud is taking control of secret, just pressing in the inner bomb site. Just gonna fall back now and gonna go for the A execute. 
Finally, Dan. Finally. Yes, uh, I hope so. Let's well, let's see what variation they have. There aren't a lot of variations because wall of smoke tends to mean a wall of smokes. But I have to see if they have a little, a little bit of flavour, extra, extra NA flavour. So there's the smoke towards Ali, which is really nice. That allows the players to come out to your main. And uh, what are the smokes we're going to see here? They're going to be flashing on in smokes all over the place. As uh, we see Hayes making his way through there aggressively, and wow, finding a frag onto nothing. He was sprinting through Ali. And I'm not sure what's going on right now, but uh, CLG have shot this down. I don't think they smoked off the front of Yard, like like cut Yard in half with the smokes. Yeah, they, they did. They? they threw the smokes like extremely deep, yeah. which kind of makes no sense because if they do it late in the round, CLG is probably going to have forward positions. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So uh, it really doesn't cut off anything. And they, really? s they split into Ali as well. Uh, usually what, we s uh, usually uh, what teams favor is to put all the players through Pop Dog and main because that way everyone's together. So you can trade really effectively because the wall of smokes cut off the long range angles for, for the, the CT team. So the execute definitely didn't pan out this time. Maybe they've got another variation. Maybe they'll show us how it works properly in a future round. But they are running out of future rounds. We're almost at the end of this second map here between Cloud9 and CLG here on the HTC Reborn Invitational. And Perfect smoke in from the CTs. JDM64 in position here, and Finesse should be able to get this done. And the incendiary was spot on there. That's going to burn the bomber, dropping that one straight next to the train. But Sean Gaines is going in, tearing players up here with the P250. He only picks up one, though, that said. And 2 on 2 still for the Tatis to play with. P250s and no armor, though. So Sean Gaines looking for the spot, the safe spot on the ladder. And, uh, so far getting cleaned up here. Just no weapons and no armor, it's just so difficult. And the, t the CTs, CLG, they will win the round. So 14 to 11. And uh, the bomb did go down for Cloud9. Let's have a look and see how many rounds they lost in a row. So, as you can see, it's going to be a two. And, uh, which means uh, 1900. I wonder if this will trigger an inner push for Cloud9. Because they might be thinking, okay, we almost won Eco here. Maybe we, we should actually try pushing this with uh, guns. Like the only round they tried it, it was the round where Sean Garris, TK, that other guy, yeah. when they yeah, got yeah. two entries, so it seems like they have had a lot of success on the inner side. This and is like the A play again. Yeah, exactly. Sean Garris and Shroud taking secret. Because last time we saw nothing, also kind of running up alley by himself. I think that I think this split of players hurt them a lot last time. Oh, they got the double peak from two angles. That is actually a very awesome mix-up from CLG, to be honest. It's actually fairly safe if you think Cloud9 are not going to like rush in her, which is unlikely in, in a the position they're in. And Haste is going to go in. He's going to look for a player, but there's nobody there. Is Kadoodle going to make a key frag there? Oh my god, Haste. If they wait long, too long here, Freakazoi is going to get some bullets in the back, but they're going to go forwards. They have no idea about Haste. He could completely blow up this play here for Cloud9. He's going to spot Skadoodle. He's going to keep his position unknown until he can get a more favorable position to get multiple kills. And Skadoodle has no idea. Finally, he's going to just frag him. Not going to risk it. Good advantage found, as now they have to look behind them in front of them, to the side, all over the place. Finesse now trying to get the flank as well from Pop Dog. He's going to take down nothing. And Cloud9 are going to get closed in from every single angle in this round. As we see Sandwich, another Sandwich there by JDM64. And Hayes will finish off Sean Gares. CLG are all over them in that round. That is a disaster. Yeah, and Cloud9 with no money now as well. So... Yeah, they have to do a simple force buy. I wouldn't be surprised if they just went for like a straight out more of a like YOLO play to yard this round. Yeah, it's definitely been very difficult for them to pick pick up any success or find a play that is consistent. I don't think we've had a consistent play actually thinking about it just yet. Uh, it's generally the chaos that it's always chaotic. And uh, the smoke execute did not pan out either. Now Finesse is there just waiting close uh, so we can hear the any stepping. It's going to smoke off at 1.13 there. So by the time that smoke goes away, it'll be like uh, 54 seconds or so left on the clock. He's got a teammate who can possibly re-smoke if he wants. JDM64. Also, they also all have incendiaries as well, which will make life a bit difficult. Now, they don't have to go for the execute here. They can just try to fake this. But this is the round. 
They need to. They have no more chances if they want to win this map and take it to the grand final straight away. They got to go to overtime here. In they go though for the inner play with a bit of delay. And Cloudline sprinting up to Connector. They know how important it is to take Connector immediately and away from the CTs. And Shroud with a double. This is looking good right now for Cloud9 to stay alive. At least one more round. Bomb going to go down. Sean Gares going to just get up close and personal with the Tech 9. He's going to just ruin lives as it's JDM64. He's left over. Picks up a fast headshot onto nothing with two players who are left alive. Shroud and Sean Gares who are tagged up. JDM64 can cause some havoc here. But he will get tagged on the way through Connector and... 15 to 12, Cloud9 pick up one more, but again. 13k on JDM. Died only 14 times in 28 rounds, on 27 rounds. That's pretty, pretty good, actually. Yeah. That's pretty good. So, yeah, let's see what they're going to do now. Looks like, yeah, the standard round. Oh no, actually, three guys going towards Sally. And the cool thing about the way CLG have been playing Ali is that uh, they their gambles are on, on Ali with you know when when they put players there or when they put the push in there or whatever they do there because they've showed two two aggressions there. You just know it's impossible to understand when they will do that. Yeah. And that's that's the power of it as well because Cloud9 they can't exactly abuse that and play for trades because that would be perfect right now. See that two man push, and then CLG run into three T's waiting for them. That would be a perfect start to a round for Cloud9, but it's not going to happen this time. And do they want to push three people for rally? Well, it looks like uh, not. They just, they're just. I think they're just protecting against that timing. But it's actually going to come in anyway, a bit late, but just with haste, and that's going to pay off for them. So, Cloud9 up, up a man now. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is, if Cloud9 wins this round, it there's basically only one like weapon round for TLG left. So this is not impossible for Cloud9 to do. Yeah, entries come in though for Ali and Cloud9 looking to make this work. They've got another frag, it's a three on three though. The trays are looking not too bad here, but oh wow, Tarot gonna get caught up on CT Sky. He's gonna get thrown straight out of the window as uh, now Finesse and JDM64 look to retake this. Now their position is so far unknown. This is where the silences can be incredibly important and Finesse is about to find a play. It's been very noisy, but that angle there is going to allow for a quick trade from Finesse onto nothing as he now is the last man against Skadoodle and Shroud. And this is so hard to go for retakes as a CT and he's going to get annihilated. Man, I have, to, I have to say from my personal experience, I feel like the train bomb site is the hardest site in the game for the one versus X situation retake because they can yeah, be they everywhere. Can, they can be everywhere, exactly. They can be everywhere. Like, there can be one guy left, and he can yeah. easily win a 1v3 because he can get, like, two players before he even, and like, realize where he is. And the best thing is, is like, saying that instead of they can be anywhere, is that they can be everywhere. Because that's what you feel like when, yeah. you're, when you're in that situation. Like, they're everywhere <laughs> around yeah. me. But we do have the eco in from CLG. So Cloud9, they are in a pretty big advantage here. Um, now, it's actually going to be a quick kill found by JDM64, but we should have uh, solid yard c control here from Cloud9 very shortly. And indeed, um, a spray down coming in from nothing, and Skadoodle going to be turning his attention to uh, JDM64 as uh, 